Okay, we are going to start off today with a review of how latitude affects temperature and precipitation, or in other words, how latitude affects our climate. Um, the first thing that we're going to talk about is how latitude affects our temperature. Um, we need to remember back to when we learned about the seasons, and uh, we learned about how solar radiation at the equator is much more concentrated than solar radiation is as we move away from the equator towards the poles. We can see in this picture here that there are um, five different rays from the sun, and they are all the same width. They're the same size ray, okay? But this ray here that hits near the equator hits in a very small area. It's very concentrated. So that heat gets concentrated into that small area. Whereas as we move away from the um, equator towards the poles, that same size ray winds up uh, covering a much larger area. So its heat gets spread out. This causes the temperatures down here near the equator to be very high and the temperatures up here by the poles to be very low. Okay, We can see this happening if we look at a world um, map that shows the annual mean temperature or the annual average temperature. Here at the equator, this is where the temperatures are the highest upwards of 80, 85 degrees Fahrenheit. As we move away from the equator towards the North Pole and towards the South Pole, the temperatures get lower and lower and lower. And at the South Pole, the average temperature is actually as low as negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit. That's very cold. So the equator is the warmest, and as we move away from the equator, it gets colder. And that's how latitude affects temperature. Latitude also affects precipitation. Um, latitude affects precipitation in a, in a little bit different way. Um, all over our Earth, uh, air is circulating because of convection. Uh, convection, remember, is where the warm air rises and the cooler air sinks. Um, because of a lot of reasons that we're not going to get into, we wind up with areas across the world where the air is constantly rising. When the air is constantly rising, that allows um, water vapor in the air to rise, which can then condense into clouds and form precipitation. Okay, we also have areas all over the world where the air is constantly sinking. When the air is constantly sinking, no evaporation can rise. And when no evaporation rises, there's no clouds that can form. We don't get any precipitation. So if we look at the very left-hand side of this picture that is on the screen, um, we can see the areas of rising and sinking air. Okay, this right here represents the earth um, and these arrows are representing uh, different areas of rising and sinking air. So right here um, at the equator, zero degrees latitude, we can see that warm air is constantly rising. When that warm air rises, that allows evaporation to rise and form clouds. Okay, so at the equator, where that warm, humid air is constantly rising, we get a lot of rainforests. Uh, for example, the African rainforest and also the Amazon rainforest are both at the equator. As we move away from the equator towards about 30 degrees north latitude and 30 degrees south latitude, this is where the air comes down. Okay, where the air comes down, it pushes down any moisture in the air so nothing can rise up here to form clouds when we have no clouds we have no rain so at 30 degrees latitude this is where most of the world's deserts occur uh, one example is the sahara desert which occurs at 30 degrees north latitude um, the desert that is make that makes up the southwest united states arizona new mexico that area is also at about 30 degrees north latitude um, as you continue to move further north to 60 degrees north latitude and 60 degrees south latitude, this is another area where the air once again rises. Where air rises, evaporation can form clouds. When evaporation forms clouds, we get precipitation. At 60 degrees latitude, this is where um, a lot of our temperate and deciduous forests um, form. Um, for example, the fir forest 
um, of the Pacific Northwest would form here. Um, this is where, like, uh, the movies, twi the Twilight movies take place. So that scene, something like that would be familiar um, at that latitude. As we move even further away from the equator towards 90 degrees north latitude and 90 degrees south latitude, which is actually the North and South Pole, this is another area where air is constantly sinking. So here we can see this air sinking and this air sinking towards Earth. When air sinks, we get no precipitation. When we have no precipitation, we get deserts. Um, the North and South Pole is one that's kind of a little bit misleading because when we see pictures of the North and South Pole, like right here, we see snow, which is a kind of precipitation. We have to remember that the North and South Pole are very cold. Um, so the precipitation that they get never goes away. It has accumulated over thousands of years. If we look at um, a map that shows the average annual precipitation, we can see that at the North and South Poles, they actually get about under 10 inches of precipitation a year. Okay, but that precipitation just never melts. It, it stays there um, for thousands of years. Um, at the equator, this is where we get the darkest bands. So we have um, the Amazon rainforest, the African forest, jungles of Southeast Asia. At 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south, we have deserts. And then once again, like I was saying, at 60 degrees north and 60 degrees south, we get more bands where it is green and we get heavier precipitation. So that is how um, our latitude affects both our temperature and precipitation.